Hi everyone, thanks for watching. You can support our work on our website ageoftruth.tv and please like our videos, subscribe to our channels on YouTube, BitChute and Brideon and remember to hit the bell for notifications and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. To be sure not to miss any of our shows, you can sign up for our newsletter on our website ageoftruth.tv Hi Henry, can you hear me? I can hear you and I can see you. You're a lot younger than I expected. <laughs> I'm Lauge. We have been writing together and I've been setting up the interview with you. But I'm glad to appear. How old are you? You look about 22. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I'm in the 30s. So, You're uh, in your 30s? Yeah. You, you, you must live a healthy life and, <laughs> and abstain from sex. <laughs> I'm well, just kidding, actually. I have you on here. Uh, it really is, Henry. And thank you so much for coming on and doing the interview with us. We really appreciate it. We've been looking forward to it. Okay. And, well, I think we are ready. I will turn on the camera and get the line through to the studio with Lucas Alexander. Hello and welcome to this edition of Age of Truth TV. I'm Lucas Alexander in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the 11th of April, 2024, and our special guest today is a legendary figure within alternative media circles. He's a Canadian author, investigative journalist and columnist, a truth and conspiracy researcher and a dot connector. He became widely known already as a child with his popular and successful newspaper column and book Ask Henry in the 1960s. He invented the board game Scruples, and he is of course known for his informative and controversial articles on henrymacko.com. It is a great thrill and a pleasure to welcome him here on the show, Henry Macko. Good evening from Copenhagen, Denmark, and welcome to all of our viewers on Age of Truth TV. Please like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. We have a fascinating and explosive uh, episode for you today with a really uh, fantastic and sensational gentleman. I've been looking forward to having him on the show. I've known of his work for years, but we've never had him with us before, so it's really exciting. And uh, without further ado, let's go to Mexico City and meet Dr. Henry Mackel. Thank you so much, Henry. I'm thrilled to have you with me here today. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. Before we go into a lot of details about current topics and all of the things you've been talking about for many years and writing on your website, henrymacko.com, please tell the audience a little bit about your fascinating background as a columnist since you were a child and what you did throughout your career. Well, um, <clears throat> my, uh, my, my website is like the third act in my life. Uh, the first act was a advice to parents column when I was 12 years old. The second act was inventing uh, the game Scruples, which sold 10 million copies, um, which I did in 1984. And then this website and the four or books or a book based on it are, um, are my third act. And uh, basically I'm, um, I'm 74 years old. Um, I was, I'm a Canadian, um, I'm an ethnic Jew, but I, um, 
I don't believe in the Jewish religion. I believe the Jewish religion is is basically a uh, satanic cult. Masquerading as religion. And uh, it's not a religion at all. Um, but I'm an ethnic Jew, and um, I feel I represent assimilated Jews, Jews who don't want any part of uh, the Jewish supremacist agenda. And uh, I think it's very important that people realize that uh, this is the agenda of organized Jewry. Um, it's not the agenda of uh, assimilated Jews like myself. And so I, I feel a need to uh, to speak up lest uh, assimilated Jews are blamed for the uh, absolutely crazy agenda of uh, organized Jewry. And uh, the big principle um, I want to start off with is people, it's all very simple. They try to obscure it, obfuscate it, but the fact is, that the uh, light motive of uh, organized Jewry is basically to uh, exploit and, ex and enslave the Goyim. And that's, that's basically the agenda behind uh, uh, Agenda 2030 and, um, and various uh, pandemics we've seen. And uh, it, it, people have to realize that they don't realize this agenda because organized Jewry controls the media. And we've been uh, we've been uh, brainwashed to uh, and trained to think that the the media is telling us the truth. In fact, it's uh, obscuring the truth. And actually, you've had your website longer than most people in the alternative media, because as far as I know, no, you started already in the year two thousand. That was the early beginning, the early days of the internet. And before we get into all of these controversial things you're already saying here, let me just go back to your early beginning. That's so amazing. It seems like you were kind of a boy genius or something, writing articles in many syndicated newspapers already as a 12-year-old boy. And uh, you wrote a book as well. I mean, how did that even come about? How did that happen? Uh, it's just an advice. It was an advice to parents column. Um, it, I wrote it between the ages of 11 and 13, and um, it was in 40 papers, including uh, some very big newspapers like the Los Angeles uh, Times and the Boston Globe and the Miami News. And um, it was essentially, uh, the, 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 the idea was that a child supposedly would give parents better advice on child rearing. And I was on the Jack Parr show. I was on. I was in Life magazine. Like I, I used. To, I like to say I have a great future behind me. <laughs> or my 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 other my other line was um, <clears throat> like Egypt and Greece. I peaked too early. <clears throat> that's that's incredible. I mean, as a twelve year old, and then I mean, it, yeah, you really had a life upside down in that way. And also, people can see, and I want to show a little clip from that as well on this show. You as a twelve year old appearing on that legendary game show, "What's My Line," with. Uh, the actress Arlene Francis, actor Tony Randall, Random House publisher Bennett, Bennett Cerf, and that very controversial and inspirational columnist Dorothy Kilgallen. I mean, that is quite uh, an extraordinary thing to, to see that. Let's just watch a little clip of that. Mr. Macro, where are you from? Ottawa, Canada. Ottawa, Canada. How nice it is to have somebody from our neighbors come down and see us. May I present our panel, Mr. Macro? Yeah, you do, Mr. Macro. And will you join me over here, please, Henry? Uh, are you familiar with our scorekeeping system? Yes. Yeah. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Mm. Panel, uh, Mr. Macko is salaried, deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Macko, are you in any way connected with the performing arts? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Rett. <laughs> is writing involved in your job? Yes. <laughs> you could ask that a college degree was necessary to what he does. <laughs> Um, is writing the integral part of your job? Repeat that, please. Is writing the principal part of your job? Yeah. 
guess so. <laughs> You're beginning to smile with your yeses now. No. That's right. Two down and eight to go. Um, what kind of a cop? We're going to rule out science fiction then from Mr. Mako, right? right. Mm -hmm. He writes a column. It's not on sports. It's not on space or science fiction. If he writes a gossip column, he started much too young. <laughs> it can't be that. Do you think that children today in the Canada and the United States are kind enough to their parents? Yes, I think so. You think they're giving them a square deal? Oh, well, parents are okay. The kids will be okay, too. Well, that answers Bennett. <laughs> That's so, so amazing to see you there. It's absolutely amazing. And also at the end, when people go and watch that whole episode, they can see when you greet the panel at the end, you stop in front of Dorothy Kilgallen and talk to her. And she died under very mysterious and suspicious circumstances, probably well, she because was she, murdered. she was murdered, right? Because uh, she knew too, too much about the JFK assassination. But I mean, what what are your memories of this experience as a twelve year old, and also talking to to, to Kilgallen? Look, I was a pretty arrogant and cocky twelve year old. I, you know, I, um, <clears throat> I could I I could see that I was being told to respect my elders, but I could see what a mess they'd made of the world. So I was pretty skeptical. I, in fact, my whole life is uh, the the um, spring uh, board from it was uh, reading the rise and fall of the third Reich. I, I could, you know, I, you know, as a 10 year old Jewish boy, my parents were Holocaust survivors. They weren't in camps, but they passed as Christians. And uh, so naturally I was, you know, I was being told to respect my elders, but I could see that they totally made a mess out of the world. And my whole life actually has been dedicated to figuring out uh, it was, it's basically true of my whole generation, uh, people born around 1950. Um, we we really wanted to save the world. You know that was the the uh, the credo of my generation. You know Phil Oaks and uh, the uh, folk music in the early 60s and all of that. And so uh, my whole life was been dedicated to try to figure out what's what's going on and and why why. Uh, it's such a mess and why some there's so much suffering from war and uh, depression and so on and i feel i've just discovered the reason and i feel like my um my mission um i'm living out my mission but you couldn't have known about all of these controversial topics back then there were no knowledge about it and i'm just thinking of i mean what happened in your like did, did your life take a dramatic turn uh, being discovered, being on What's My Line and Jack Parr show and all of these things. And no, none of that. I, I didn't figure out what was going on until starting until the year 2000 when I was about 50. Uh, when I uh, started to uh, question feminism. I mean, I was a feminist. I was actually a Zionist. But um, I had an instinctive desire to rule my own roost. Basically, uh, I feel... Uh, men were designed to um, uh, protect and provide for women and children, and women were designed to uh, have women, have children and look after them and to nurture their par their their husbands and their children. And I, I had this instinctive desire to rule my own roost. In other words, be with a woman who uh, who who accepted my leadership. And uh, that's when I began to challenge feminism. And that's when I got into a lot of trouble, got kicked out of the university for that reason. Uh, I, but I developed a, a whole analysis of uh, heterosexuality, which I outline in my book, Cruel Hoax. And uh, heterosexuality is, base, is based on the exchange of female power for male power um, expressed as love. Women don't really want power. They want love and uh, men want power. So basically women give men power. Men give those women love. It's exchange of love, uh, power for love. Well, I can tell you, Henry, in this country where we are in Denmark, in Scandinavia, 
This is the second most feminist country in the world after Sweden, which is our neighbors, neighbors actually. And a lot of women in this country really want a lot of power. That is kind of what we are hearing and seeing all the time. We also have a, the second female prime minister. A lot of uh, females are, uh, women are on uh, top posts, actually. So we are seeing that a lot in this country, I'm telling you. Well, I, I believe people whether uh, should be judged on the basis of their merit, their experience, their ability, not on the basis of their gender or color. So, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't mind. Uh, I mean, I'm happy to see competent women in charge. The trouble is mo a great many of these women are not competent. They're just basically proxies for the uh, banking cartel. And, uh, and that's the one of the things we have to realize is we gave, we gave our national credit cards to people who want to destroy us. And that's the banking cartel, the world banking cartel. And they have our national credit card. And, um, and, base, and during the uh, pandemic, we saw how uh, everyone is ruled by money and they control money. And, uh, and all of a sudden for two years, uh, and still now, people had no, no principles, no conscience, no moral compass. They basically revealed themselves to be the kind of prostitutes that they really are under the surface. That's sad, but but that's what happens when you give. Like if I if I gave my worst enemy my banking information, can you imagine where I would be? I mean, he, he used this information to bankrupt me, and that's what they're doing. Look around. Look at the United States national debt. Um, look at how there's, they're basically maxing out these credit cards, the national credit cards. They're maxing it out, uh, forgiving student loans, giving grants to migrants, having stupid, uh, unnecessary wars like in Ukraine and financing Ukraine. Uh, and that's that money's all going up in smoke. Um, so basically, they're maxing out the national credit card, and there's going to be some kind of uh, financial crisis. Many people believe that's why g gold is now at uh, new highs. Well, they want to implement the social credit system and have you know, like like in China, and have a system like in China. Isn't that basically what these uh, wor new world order orchestrators want? Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Now, one other important point that I make, and uh, as far as I know, nobody else is making, and that is all wars are contrived. All, especially the major wars, they're all contrived. They're Freemasons on both sides. Putin's a Freemason. Uh, the American neocons, they're all Freemasons. And, and these wars are contrived to kill the Goyim. And, and the same, and, and to uh, kill assimilated Jews. And uh, so if you look at the, look at the Israeli-Gaza conflict, Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, they're all Freemasons. Benjamin Netanyahu and his, and his cabinet, they're all Freemasons. These wars are, um, Hitler was a Freemason, although he didn't admit it. All these wars, uh, Churchill was a Freemason. Roosevelt was a Freemason. The, uh, these wars are all contrived to basically kill the Goyim and kill the assimilated Jews who aren't part of the program. And I'm an assimilated Jew and that's why I speak up. My parents, my grandparents died in the Holocaust. Uh, they were shot by Germans by the Nazis. My parents would have been killed had they not been able to pass as uh, Christians. I mean, that's, that's my heritage. That's my, you know, that's why I was born with my, my parents barely survived. And that's been my life work to figure out what the, what the hell's going on. Did your family, your parents come from Poland? Yes, they're both Polish Jews. Uh-huh. So, um, in the Second World War, we, you, you just mentioned Hitler as a Freemason, but supposedly he was also a Rothschild, an illegitimate Rothschild, because his grandmother worked for um, that Rothschild that was in uh, in Vienna. I believe that's true. Uh, 
because there were references made by his sister saying you really angered our grandfather. Plus, uh, the, plus uh, Hitler's mother was getting uh, uh, money from the from a Jewish uh, benefactor who was probably an intermediary. So this whole whole orchestration, and we see it today as well, and we saw it uh, during the first first World War and uh, the Second World War and the Cold War and all of that. It is basically the top elitist, also known as the Illuminati, that are orchestrating and implementing the New World Order through the Hegelian dialectic, divide and conquer, splitting, and these wars and, and conflicts and all of that. So they do have one, uh, well, collected goal, a mutual goal, and that is to control uh, humani humanity in various ways. So when you talk about being a, an assimilated Jew and talking against what is happening in Israel, you're talking basically about Zionism, right? Yeah, well, the uh, the banking cartel uh, uh, is, uh, they're Freemasons. And uh, they, bas they basically organize politics so that they've got Freemasons on the right, who are Zionists and Freemasons on the left who are communists. And so it's a, it's a charade. And um, the uh, Freemasons on the right, uh, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. There is, n I can't find a nationalist and a traditionalist and a conservative leader who isn't pro-Zionist. In other words, they're so well organized that w if you're a conservative, you're going to be pro-Zionist, and if and if you're a uh, and if you're anti-Zionist, you're going to be a communist, and you're going to be left. So basically, they've got this charade going between the left and the right. And now Biden, uh, he's actually a left communist, but. I mean, they're all, they all answer to the Jewish banking cartel so they can wear both hats. They switch back and forth, decide who's going to win the war. So in the Second World War, they, they, they controlled Hitler and they basically decided the whole point of the Second World War was to destroy Germany and to have a Holocaust in order to justify the establishment of Israel, brainwash Jews into thinking that they need a state. When in fact... Uh, it's really the uh, the Danes, the Germans, the English, and the French, and the Russians who need a national homeland because they're all controlled by the Jewish banking cartel. And you're talking about all of these people actually working for the same thing, but you're not talking against the ordinary Jew, obviously, being a Jew yourself. You're talking about the top elitists. You call them Freemasons, but I mean, there are different levels of that as well. There's a lot of Freemasons that do not comply to this whole thing or know about it, but it's more the Illuminati top level or you, you're talking about, right? Yeah, Freemasonry is really based on Judaism, a Kabbalist Judaism, and uh, most, most Jews don't really know the true Jewish agenda, which is to enslave um, and uh, in, enslave and dispossess mankind. That's the true Jewish agenda. That's the real reason for, um, for uh, anti-Semitism. And um, uh, most most Jews are dupes. They've been brainwashed to think that the whole world hates them for no reason, and therefore, the, uh, and therefore, they have to rally behind uh, Zionists. So that was the reason why they created the first and especially the Second World War. Then, or what? One of the, that was one of the major reasons, and and, and another was to destroy. Uh, uh, Germany and German nationalism, and also to, you know, murder, I think they murdered something like six million anti-Semites, Nazis. They murdered six million Nazis in the Second World War. You never hear that. But they also murdered something like 20 million Russians. You know, all these people were goyim. And then, but then they switched everyone's attention to the fact that God knows how many, two to four, I don't know, million Jews died. And so everyone thinks the Second World War was a Jewish Holocaust, 
when in fact it was a Gentile Holocaust. A lot of people in these alternative uh, truth circles are beginning to speculate or talk about whether or not, I'm not talking about Holocaust deniers, but I'm talking about those that say that the figures and the numbers do not add up, that they didn't maybe kill as many, but they said they did, because it would be it would be difficult not Zionists to- Zionists who basically organized and orchestrated the Jewish Holocaust, Jews, Zionist Jews funded the Holocaust, funded the Nazis. Uh, Henry, what do you consider when we go to this, I mean, 2024 now, and so much has happened, not only just in the last four years, but in the last 20 years, let's say, since 9-11, but also before that. But what do you consider to be the greatest problem that we are facing right now in 2024? Well, we're on the cusp of a world war. That's the greatest problem. And um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but I'm constantly posting, and I posted again today on my website, a quotation from Albert Pike, which uh, in eight, so go to my website, henrymacko.com, M-A-K-O-W, and you'll see this quote by Albert Pike, who is a free, uh, grand uh, mason, who uh, basically in a letter to Giuseppe Messini, said we're going to have three world wars and in the third world war our agents among the zionists like netanyahu and our agents among the islamists like the leader of islam uh, of iran you know iran is controlled by freemasons israel is controlled by freemasons this whole fight is a charade in fact israel was started in order to in order to um precipitate this third world war in order to kill a lot of people. And um, that was the whole purpose. And, and it's coming down. Yes. So that's the, that's the main problem. Uh, we're, we're on the cusp of a world war unless we, unless we step back. But do you think it's going to be a world war like the first and the second? A lot of people say it might be like a technocratic, te technological AI type of uh, cyber world war, not necessarily physical with tanks and military and all of that. But what do you think? No, I think uh, you just have to look at Ukraine. I think that's that's what's going down. That's what's going to go down in the Middle East. That could easily go down in China, in Taiwan, although you know, China, Russia, the United States are all controlled by the same people. So uh, Iran, Israel, they're all controlled by the same people. So what we're, in my opinion, what we're seeing is a charade. But in my, in my opinion, the, the, the goal of this charade is depopulation. They, and uh, they, they haven't made a secret that depopulation is what they're all about. And, but why and, do you think they want to de depopulate the world? Because they they say we're too many. Uh, it's it's just greed. You know, they've got 90% of the wealth. They want the last 10. Also, they they hate uh, they hate the uh, people who aren't uh, Satanists. Uh, we're infidels because we don't worship Satan. Uh, so that's their attitude. Uh, anyone who doesn't worship their God, who is Satan, although they don't want to admit it, um, uh, must be killed. I mean, I mean, look at what Israel, Israel did to Gaza. It's um, it's it's uh, disgraceful. It's Israel will be a pariah among nations forever. Now, why would they go to that extreme? Because this is a lead up to something even worse. I mean, why would Israel um, basically spoil their monopoly on victimhood, spoil the Jewish monopoly on uh, on uh, morality and victimhood and all that? I mean, it's gone. It's gone forever. And uh, I, uh, you know, I don't have a, I, I, I want to be wrong, naturally. I want to be 100% wrong. I'd love to be wrong about everything. I've ever said, but unfortunately, uh, we're we're basically 90 percent. We're in the ninth, eighth or ninth inning, 
uh, the world has been the world has been pretty well taken over because we gave control over money to people who think we're at, who think we're animals and should die. I mean, we're Palestinians in their eyes. I mean, look what they did to us during the uh, pandemic. I mean, just look what they did to us, but we want to forget it. Forget, forgive and forget. But but they pretty well um, took the mask off and made it very clear, those ridiculous pictures of Klaus Schwab in his, his uh, Star Wars, Star Trek outfit, you know, and this is a great opportunity to build, you know, to reset and build back better. You know, that is a, a Kabbalist philosophy. It's called creative destruction. Uh, I have another essay on that, the Jewish plot to destroy Christian civilization, in which they admit that they want to destroy, they admit it, that they have, it's called creative destruction. They have to destroy the old order. The old order is the society which we were brought up in, societies that nurtured us and gave us a great deal of resources and freedom to live our lives as we want. That's the old order. Uh, they want to destroy that um, and, and build back better. But build back better is 666. And uh, ba basically, they want to they want to establish a satanic uh, dispensation, and people have to understand that Satanism is very simple to understand. I mean, they try to obfuscate its meaning with all kinds of mysticism and bullshit. Satanism is the is under Satanism, good is evil, evil is good, beautiful is ugly, ugly is beautiful, uh, healthy is um, sick, sick is healthy, and, and, and natural is unnatural, unnatural is natural. And, and as you see, they're trying to get rid of a gender. And they're trying to, you know, let, think that gender is whatever you identify with. This is all Satanism. It's all designed to basically uh, shred the social fabric that was established under the Christian dispensation. The, the difference between the Christian and the Jewish dispensation is the Christian dispensation is we all, we all have a spark of divinity in us and it is our purpose in life to fulfill, fulfill God's mission for each of us, whatever it happens to be. My mission is the truth, but someone else's mission might be love, a mother looking after her babies, that may be him, her mission. Um, it, God is perfection. Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect as your father who is in heaven is perfect. G uh, God is a spirit. God is consciousness. God is perfection. Perfect truth, perfect uh, justice, beauty, love, um, bliss. God, and you know, a lot of people in their after-death experiences, they're actually having these experiences of God. They're there. And when you mention God. God, do you talk about it from a biblical point of view? Do you believe that God is like a male figure sitting on a cloud with a, no, a beard? I, or is it a force, a source? They invented that nonsense in order to discredit God. Jesus is very clear that God is a spirit. A spirit. That, In other words, perfection. It, he, God our, our love of God is our love of perfection. Justice. Don't we all love justice? You know, don't we all love uh, beauty? Don't we all love truth? This, you know, we are all in love with God. But because they've messed up our perception of what God is, uh, they managed to divert us. And I think it's probably because a lot of people are a little bit hesitant when they hear that word God, unless they devote themselves to a specific religion or Christianity in its various forms. Uh, it's the all-powerful creator force. Yeah, God is the intelligence uh, behind the universe, and uh, religion is basically getting in tune with that intelligence and obeying it. And that's so, my religion. And it's so simple, you know, and I won't make a dime from it, will I? You know? So, um, so <laughs> yeah, Satan... People these... are going to say, well, that, was, that took you two minutes. I'm not going to give you any money. <laughs> I don't want any money. I've got more money than I want need. 
Yeah, you invented the game scruples. I mean that. Yeah, that's... I didn't make my money from that. I actually blew all that money, but uh, but uh, I, I've made money. Um, I've made money other ways. <clears throat> but can I just I inherited ask you... money from my dad? Oh, did you? All right. I mean, can I just ask you because I have a lot of questions about everything you just said. But I mean, can can I just say what did you do between being the young Ask Henry until you you did your website? Good question. I uh, I got a PhD in English because I I I I was dedicated to finding out truth, right? Uh, so I um, so uh, but I didn't know what the truth was. Um, I mean, I'm a natural born writer and editor. That's practically the only thing I can do. And uh, but I didn't know what the truth was, so I figured, well, I'll just go to university and find out what everyone else thinks is true, right? So I spent 10 years getting a PhD and reading, you know, the uh, the great thinkers in English literature anyway. And uh, <clears throat> then I realized that the whole education system is fucked. It's, you know, look at my website, henrymacko.com. There's, there's an article in the left-hand column called uh, How... Um, um, how university betrays how university betrays students. I mean, it's basically Masonic brainwashing. That mortar board is a Masonic that you get on graduation. It's a Masonic symbol, a mortar board, you know, for Freemasonry. Uh, uh, and so um, the whole uh, the, our whole society is, and it's important to understand that our whole Western society, especially is satanically possessed. It's focused on sex and money or money and sex, depending on your priorities. And those, and those- But I mean, is, 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 but Henry, isn't that kind of also a natural thing? I mean, uh, when, when you were younger um, and you were living and growing up during the hippie days, did you like not do, do did you not have any fun or what? Oh, I was, I was a product of, uh, I'm a product of this society and I've been satanically possessed all my life. You know, I, in fact, uh, uh, I have an article on my site called, uh, you could Google it, it's called, I was born into a satanic cult. Just, if you want to find my articles, uh, go to Google or Bing is better actually. And it's just go Henry Mako, uh, I was born into a satanic cult or Henry Mako, any topic you want, feminism or whatever. Uh, they'll they'll come up more usually on Bing because uh, Google is getting more restrictive and shadow banning me. Yeah, absolutely. Like to all, <clears throat> like it does to all, to all of us. But I mean, so so you were having a bit of fun, and I guess that's all. It's part of life, isn't it? Part of being a human being and manifesting in this form when we're here yeah. in the yeah, you're pretty right. limited you're time right. span. We just have to realize that that's that's our ego. The way I see humanity is. We are, we are basically angels put in the bodies of apes, and uh, the this infatuation with uh, sex and money is an ape thing. Uh, we we're stuck in this body of apes, so I I don't I don't personally believe in denying it. I I was able to overcome um, um, my um, or or manage my uh, sex drive. Not by um, becoming a monk, but by actually, I'd look at porn and I'd I'd have relationships, and I've I've been virtually married four times, uh, so I, I have. I mean, I I found the best way to get over sex and money is to uh, get plenty of it. Because <laughs> uh, well, there you have because, it. Because because you realize that it's not what you really want or need. P people have <clears throat> most people. A lot of people have got. 50 or 100 times more money than they need. In fact, the whole problem with inflation is there's too much money out there. Um, um, I mean, I watch these uh, YouTube shorts and a guy stops people in the street and says, how much money do you have? And there's just young people and they've got 100, 200, $300,000. And he asks one girl, well, how did you make that kind of money? Selling her used or her her panties online after used panties. I mean, <laughs> people are getting people are getting very rich in the weirdest ways, 
Uh, a lot of women are probably just becoming permanent mistresses to rich men. I mean, men, men are so obsessed with sex. But that has always happened, Henry. I mean, it's always been like that in one way or the other, right? Yeah. I'm but not I mean, don't you think, I mean, you're talking a lot about feminism and on all of this imbalance, which we really do have today. There is an imbalance in terms of gender and position and, and especially with the... the the male, uh, the male part of the population. But don't you think there's a good thing to uh, this whole, let's say that it's become more balanced now and women are out there, it's equal pay, we're equal, we're equal in more, in better terms so that the balance is better. Isn't, isn't that a good thing also? And, no. and also, let me just say this, that men um, are now, you know, more open to expressing their emotional softer side. Um, I would, I would never stand the way in the stand in the way of any person, um, doing whatever they think they need to do in order to fulfill themselves. I, you know, in other words, if a woman wants to be a, a brain, uh, surgeon, God bless her. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who tells people what to do. I just tell people what I think. You know, and uh, people can um, make up their own minds. I really believe in individual freedom. But the fact is that 80% 80, 80 of women, I would estimate, are uh, best suited to be wives and mothers. And I think, uh, you know, they, they have periods every month. They've got these uh, feed, feeding sacks right up there on their chest. They're designed to have children. You know, any society that believes in its future would believe in families, in in supporting families, and in having children. Other words, otherwise, there's and and in raising these children to be wholesome, uh, intelligent, constructive uh, members of society. But but the people in charge, uh, they don't want us to have children. They're into depopulation. They're into dispossession. They're into enslavement. And that's what feminism is really all about. You know, my mother in 1952, she had a business. She was importing, a, this is 1952. She was importing watch straps from Switzerland where I was born and uh, where she met my, uh, she met my uh, father in Switzerland. They were displaced persons after the war. And that's where I was born in 1949. And, uh, as I said, she uh, imported watch straps and sold them all over Eastern Ontario, Western uh, Western Quebec. She had a thriving business. It was called Canada Good Supply. And this is 1952. So, I mean, this notion that women are so oppressed, it's not true. Women in the 30s and 40s, they could do anything they want, but it, was a ba it wasn't, wasn't affirmative action. It was actual merit. And I'm all for people doing things on the basis of merit. Not uh, not the gender, not the color of their skin. So was the feminist movement in the 60s orchestrated by the same top elite group of people that are behind the orchestration and implementation of the New World Order? Uh, feminism, it, you know, literally was born out of the Communist Party of the United States in the 40s and the 50s. I have a couple of articles on my website, which shows it. I mean, Betty Friedan was a communist agent, communist party agent. Uh, uh, Gloria Steinem was working for the CIA, which is virtually working for the cent the the uh, the central banking cartel. Uh, so, I mean, feminism is communism, and the whole purpose of feminism is the purpose of communism, which is to destroy marriage in the traditional um, had, uh, society, the traditional family. That's the purpose of feminism. People are so stupid that they trust, they trust the media, they trust the government, you know, they trust the influencers that are telling them what to do. I mean, the, the fact is that the, the Masonic Jewish banking cartel controls virtually all the mainstream media. They control something like Teen Vogue, which encourages women to uh, just be promiscuous, um, explore Satanism. I mean, 
it's there's no question that uh, Satanism. Well, I don't have to tell you this. Satanism is a powerful force in our society, and it's getting more powerful. And uh, and Satanism, as I described, is is a, is a, dedicated to turning uh, our societies upside down, and we can see it happening. I mean, but but even though they're trying to turn everything upside down, which they do in all aspects of our lives, actually. Don't you think that that um, that feminism, or not feminism, but I mean, what it created, it created a better balance maybe for women to express their talent and their personality and also their sexuality, which is uh, pretty expressive actually, and they and they had been holding uh, back. I, for I would you. argue they didn't need feminism to do any of that. Uh, that's what I'd argue. I mean, feminism is they has a hidden agenda it communism has a hidden agenda i mean we can't we they'll always give you some uh uh you know plausible reason for what they're doing but the, but but there's always a hidden agenda um you know like uh the interviews that uh this guy russo did with nicholas rockefeller did you ever see those Yes, Russo, yes, of Arnold course. SSO. I saw it with Aaron Russo, who was Aaron actually Russo killed uh, not long after. Well, he died of cancer. Who knows how? Uh, in any case, he said, "Like we want, we want children out of the home so we can indoctrinate them. We want women working so we can tax them." I mean, I mean, we've got this crazy notion that uh, the people that run society have a uh, uh, have a benign interest in us. They don't. They're out to screw us. So what you're saying is that in the past, women could actually, in the right, in if they had the right possibilities, the best possibilities, they could climb to the top. I mean, we we just talked about some uh, Dorothy Kilgallen, for example, that you met. Yeah, I mean, she Margaret was a very, Thatcher. very prolific and famous legendary figure and very successful during her time, huh? The only reason they're promoting women is basically they're promoting their uh, proxies, their agents, people who will do what they're told. Those are the women that get promoted. They're not promoting women or or blacks on the basis of merit. I'd be I'm all for that. I'm all for promoting blacks and women on the basis of merit. I I I would I would uh, go to war under a woman general if I respected her, but um. That's not what this is about. Th these people are all agents. They're Illuminati agents, and they're they're out there to basically uh, fulfill Illuminati goals, which are to uh, enslave and dispossess. And that and that seems to be coming down the tube. Like everyone is afraid that they're going to somehow uh, uh, there's going to be some kind of financial crisis, which will be used as excuse to bring in these CBDs. Uh, central bank digital currencies, and the, you know that's what people are afraid of because these people, you've got to understand their mentality. They want it all because they're spiritually depraved. They don't realize that happiness, the kingdom of heaven is within. You don't need money to be happy. But do you think like a lot of people in this field talk about them worshiping all these top elites, Illuminati, uh, bloodline families worshiping Satan and doing these satanic rituals and sacrifices and children involved and mind control MK Ultra slaves and all that. Do you think they do that because they can evoke a spirit, a satanic spirit that actually manifests, or that they're that these let's say dark demonic archon entities are feeding on? The human angst, anxiety, fear, hatred, and all of that. And that's why they create and orchestrate all of these conflicts. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's very insightful and true. But I, 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 um, I believe that S Satanism is designed to destroy its adherence, adherence. In other words, Satanism is designed to destroy Satanists and it's designed to destroy satanic societies. And that's what we're seeing. Our society is being destroyed because it is creative destruction. They figure once they've destroyed everything, they can build everything. They can build a new world in their own image, which 
basically is a world which uh, caters to them and no one else. So you're actually saying that they're self-destructive, but I mean, that's, yes, basic, that's not what they think, huh? Oh, I don't know if they realize they're self-destructive, but uh, they should because they're, I think they're all in a lot of suffering. A lot of people say that these top politicians and also uh, celebrities in Hollywood and many places that they actually have to go into these dark circles and perform some of these rituals. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, um, it's it seems to be some kind of a, a test, uh, an initiation. So uh, you have, you know, you you're probably aware of the testimony of Bernard Roland, uh, the Dutch banker. I mean, Ronald they Bernard. Were witness. Yeah. They wanted him to witness a sacrifice of a child, and he couldn't do it. So obviously, he was probably was not um, inducted into the cult. But in a more general way, humanity has all been inducted into this cult, and it's it's a powerful cult, and its power is seen in the um, in the power of uh, the World Health Organization and how they were able to lock down virtually the whole world. And it was all the same template, the same plastic uh, uh, shields, you know, the same social distancing, the same masks worldwide. It shows us that we already have a world government in place. And we've Now, probably had reason, that for a long time, huh? Exactly, exactly. Why do they want to continue? They talk about Agenda 2030, or actually Agenda 21 for the 21st century. And then the next step or the first step is 2030 and then 2050. And they want to do that, implement all of that through, well, what we saw in the last four years and more of that. And also um, climate change. Yeah, all these notions, all these notions they've got. Well, first of all, I want to say the reason they had to give up the uh, narrative It's because of Russia. I mean, as Russia and China are basically saying, we're not going to be controlled by um, Rothschild and, the, and the, the Rothschild banking cartel and, and its proxies. We're going to have, they keep saying we want a multipolar world. Um, Russia is taking a very strong stand, as you know, against homosexuality, which is Uh, you know, the promotion of homosexuality is, is an, also designed to undermine the family and uh, and to depopulate. But That's one thing is to promote it. Another thing is that those people who are homosexuals, that's part of their nature. You can't change that just as you can't change your nature. Well, that's not, in my opinion, that's not true. Or they wouldn't be propagandizing children in public schools. There's a very strong encouragement of people to uh, change their children, to change their gender, it, where happiness happiness comes from being more masculine and being more feminine. Because that's because femininity is basically being pleasing to men. And women want to be pleasing to men because they want men to love them. Women are all about love. They need to be loved. Not all women are all about love, but many are. But so are men, I guess. You know, but it, it's I, I and I guess femininity is not just about pleasing men. I think a lot of people will find you very controversial saying that. Well, damn it, uh, you know, for for ninety five percent of of human history, femininity was about pleasing men, and just because these people have had a a a, a brainwave. You know, because they're essentially communist and satanic, they can throw a wrench into that. But they're, you know, they're not going to be happy. I, you know, no fifty or six fifty year old woman who's single or forty five year old woman is ninety percent of them are not happy. They want to be married. Just go on, go on YouTube. Women are in great pain now because of feminism because they miss their chance. Uh, nature doesn't give people rain checks. Women have got to make their deal when they're irresistible to men. And that's between the ages of roughly 18 and 30. And uh, and women who are 40 or 50, I mean, I mean, don't hate me for just observing what nature is doing. It is certainly a single culture that we're living in now, and they're promoting that. 
But I mean, and that that's uh, and you're talking about heterosexuality. You said that it was forbidden in Russia to be a uh, homosexual, but that's totally different. If uh, some people that are homosexual is one thing, but to promote it to children is another thing. Uh, you know, it's we, we have to we have to separate those two things, right? Some people that's their nature, and then uh, the children, all that they should not be indoctrinated, right? Exactly. I don't exactly. I don't care. To, you know, if someone wants to be a homosexual and love men. That's, you know, like I said, I'm not going to stand in anyone's way if that's what they think will make them happy. You know, do it and find out. But, um, but the, the uh, under, you know, the undermining of heterosexuality is uh, part of the satanic and communist agenda. I mean, what do you think is the misconception of, of feminism? I mean, which is now promoted to be a good thing, but the bad thing is that it will create an imbalance today and men are now very weakened by this, right? I mean, it's like men have no say. But what are your thoughts on the whole Me Too movement that happened a few years ago? It's actually, I think it was a, a good thing. I think people like Harvey Weinstein and, and Louis C.K. Were, were out of line. I mean, they were, but this, they're basically is a casting couch thing. It's been going on for a hundred years as long as Hollywood, right? Actresses have always had to prostitute themselves. Well, I'm glad that they stopped that. I'm glad, you know, but those women who uh, complained, their careers were over. You know, that's too bad, but I'm glad they complained and I'm glad that that was stopped. And there's a whole bunch of, of uh, celebrities, most of them Jewish, who uh, who lost their careers like uh, like that guy Rose um, I forget his name Charlie uh, Rose Charlie Rose his career ended uh, a a lot of, uh, the head of CBS his career ended they're all Jews because because Jewish men have a problem with sex they're oversexed I don't know why I, I think that's because capitalism is actually a sex cult sex and death it's a sex cult. And um, and and actually, Jews are taught that you find union with God in orgasm, and that belief has Jews have spread to society as a whole, so that the sex act is actually some kind of religious, uh, uh, religious, uh, what's the word? Religious uh, ceremony. Uh, there's a word for it. Anyway. Um, all my life, I thought sex was a religious act. I, 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 I thought, you know, it wasn't until I got plenty of sex that I realized that it, there's nothing religious about sex. But uh, well, people, it depends they, on how you perform it, Henry. I guess. I mean, isn't that the most beautiful thing between two people? Well, it, I'm talking about sex um, as contrasted to sex being expression of love. That's a totally different thing. But that's not what's being encouraged today. I think you agree. Sex, it's being, sex is being encouraged uh, for its own sake as an end in itself. And uh, people actually believe that sex is the highest experience that life has to offer. And I believe that until I was roughly 50 uh, or, or even later. So uh, it's a sex cult. I mean, unless sex is joined with... Uh, a connection with a, a another human beings, um, it's it's basically uh, it's basically masturbating. Well, I think that's uh, that's a thing that they always uh, you know said was a bad thing in the, in the old days. But I mean that's uh, that's na that's a natural part of life too, huh? Yeah. Well, I think um, I think masturbation is is a great way to take the the pressure off. I mean, I used to do it when I was younger. I, d I don't need to do it anymore. I'm happily married. Great. Um, I've, been, I've been married more than 20 years. Yeah. So, and, and you and you were married four times before you said? Three times. Three times. Wow. So, so this is the lucky, um, this is the lucky one, the, the, the good marriage or what? Yeah. Because I married an old fashioned woman, although she's, uh, She's a, a web uh, a web developer, so I I basically married tech support. <laughs> Great. Well, that's that's a good asset for you on top of everything with your website. Exactly. Plus, she's got a master's degree. 
and and you know she has a career of her own and has her own money and because um so basically though, henry you you married a feminist a strong woman well the trouble is women these days um um have got this feminist thing you know going on in their head like a bunch of buzzing bees and but they're in their heart they uh they want a man that will basically uh provide uh constructive leadership and loving leadership and um they they want to belong to a man and i want my wife to feel like she belongs to me and i will do everything i can to make her happy that she belongs to me so i i won't tell her what to do and i won't control her and i'll you know i'll just exercise a uh, a loving um you know a loving attention you know which is what love is attention yeah i think a, a lot of people would love to have that i mean do you have children as well um i have a son by my first marriage oh yeah and and are you close with him or is he in the did, does he understand what your the 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 path that you went down uh no he's he my his, his mother is a feminist and a communist so and a zionist so he's been influenced by her nonetheless we have a fairly cordial relation he's in his early 30s now oh wow yeah so talk about um the whole uh, climate change agenda that they're implementing again it's now total it's total bullshit and the cv thing is total bullshit i mean everything they do is designed to destroy just like the migrants we don't need migrants do we i mean whoever heard of putting these people on the payroll while our own citizens who pay taxes and fight in wars Uh, get less money and, and less uh, consideration. It's obscene. What basically the communists, and I'm talking about all the governments of the West, Trudeau, Biden, Macron, um, the guy in uh, London and, and the guy in Germany, they're all communists and their aim is to destroy their respective societies and their big successes. I don't know if you've seen this, But on my site, on my Twitter feed, top, uh, pinned to the top, is the logo of the 2020 Democratic National Convention. Have you, have you seen it? I don't think I looked at Because it. Because really. somehow it doesn't show. But if you look up the logo of the 2020 Democratic National Convention, the logo is Star of Baphomet will destroy America. They're, they're totally up front. The Democrats, they're totally up front. Their logo was destroy America, which is what the agenda of organized jewelry, jewelry is, destroy America. And and do I think Trump is going to save America? No, he'll just, uh, he'll just postpone. Well, he was a supporter of Netanyahu as well. Trump is a, 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 a capitalist agent. He's a... He's a um, Uh, a reality show actor. The reality show is politics. Um, he could have been a great president if he weren't uh, a basically an agent of the Illuminati. I mean, he's got the the uh, smarts and the charisma. He could have been uh, Abe Lincoln, but he's a Illuminati agent. So do you think that he was put in that position to create splitting? I mean, the Hegelian dialectic, which is... Yes, uh, yes. And he, I've got an article on my site which shows he threw the election to Biden because these guys work in tandem. I call it the Judeo-Masonic tag team. He could have, he could have uh, contested the election. I mean, whoever heard of the fact that the Supreme Court which contained four of his nominees did not challenge the election when it's obvious that Biden didn't win. I mean, he couldn't get 50 people out to a rally. I mean, he even said, I've got the base, best voter fraud organization in the world. I mean, what's happened to the, uh, you know, to justice in, in the United States when, uh, when the election can be stolen brazenly. 
as it was in 2020. But, you know, it's but all, all should... elections are rigged, right? Well, I don't know for a fact, but I wouldn't be surprised. So, uh, so, so do you think Trump has a chance again in 2024? Well, it's very interesting. It's very interesting because um, um, I think there, there's liable to be a, some uh, world cha cha developments between now and November. That's still another, uh, what, eight months away, May, June, July, August, September, October, uh, seven months away. And um, uh, I, won't, I don't want to speculate. I mean, he, they're setting him up as the savior. He's America's hope. And I think he will. Um, But they did that the last time as well. And it did divide the truth movement as, uh, too, which is a very, what well, was a great strategy if they wanted to to use that, right? Because a yeah, lot of people in the truth movement thought he was doing good things. And now everything's going to change. In two weeks, he's going to take I mean, the whole have thing people down. people forgotten that Trump is responsible for the... The thing. I mean, what's wrong with people? I would much rather... Uh, a vote for, if I were an American, I'd, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. actually came up the middle and won. Be and frankly, he would be the best choice because he fought the, the thing. Um, I don't know why he chose the vice presidential candidate he did, but he's superior to, I mean, she, she should never have been his VP. I mean, he should have chosen someone like Tulsi Gabbard, who has a a record of public service, right? It, so, it, but in it, any case, uh, I, I, I would prefer. I would. I, I think uh, Kennedy is our best hope. He's the man with most in, uh, integrity. I wouldn't trust. I wouldn't trust Trump with my, with my son's uh, wagon, toy wagon. I wouldn't trust him. Period. He's a total Ghana. He. Uh, that's a Jewish word for thief. Ghana. He's been a gonoff all his life. I mean, it's 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 you know, um, Colonel House said Americans are inveterate hero worshippers. He said that in 1920 in the House report. Um, they they've been messing with the United States uh, for a hundred over a hundred years, for two hundred years, and uh, and and Americans have been like they're being frog marched into tyranny. And resisting the best they can, dragging their feet. But didn't they want to do this whole implementation of the New World Order in one way or the other since 1776 when they created the, the Illuminati and America was founded as well? Yeah, America was actually founded in order to bring in the New World Order. And I have an article on my site um, to that effect. None of this is going to go down as long as the Internet is free. Um, there's no way they can bring any of this in. War, uh, Agenda 2030, uh, climate change, none of it will come in as long as the Internet is relatively free, which I, which uh, would mean um, as free as it is now and, and not less free. Because if people can communicate worldwide instantaneously uh, with opinions and information, There's no way they're going to bring this in. So I'm very, very optimistic. But we have to, we cannot comply. We have to resist. That's a good message. And But do you have like a more personal uh, positive message for viewers watching you here and maybe are pleased to see you because they haven't seen so much of you for a while, face to face, I mean? Um. Well, I, I really believe that uh, God is perfection, and I be really believe that we are all capable of experiencing this perfection. And 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 um, I believe that life is a incredible uh, is a miracle. Human life is a miracle, and and an incredible gift, endlessly fascinating. And we get to share it with all kinds of interesting and attractive people like yourself. And, and life is great. It really is. And frankly, this the Satanists are doing us a huge favor because they're forcing us to confront reality, which we had no clue about. They had us totally deceived. 
And uh, so this is a huge blessing in disguise. I think it will ultimately lead, could lead to the end of the central banking cartel when people realize um, how pernicious uh, uh, letting um, Satanists control our credit cards um, is. So um, I, I believe that uh, what is happening was destined to happen. I think they made a huge mistake taking their mask off because now they're naked. And um, as long as communication is free, um, I think uh, things that can only get better as long as we're not all destroyed in a nuclear war. So, so there is hope, actually, you think, Henry? Yeah, I'm very hopeful. And, uh, but it's largely because of the internet. The internet is, is magic. I can't believe it's a miracle. It's magic. I don't know how they do it. I never thought I'd live long enough, to, but I, I love the internet. There is certainly a lot of censorship. And just in our remaining moments, do you think that AI will take over so that everything will be censored and we cannot find head or tails? I mean, we don't know what's true, who is real, what we're watching. No, I think, I think, um, AI will be put back in the box and will it'll be regulated because people won't tolerate being uh, messed with on a uh, on a permanent basis. We have a lot we could talk about maybe at another point. It's, it would be great to see you back here. But uh, if people want to research you more and go to your website, please mention that. And also, if they can purchase your books, how, how can they do that? It's henrymacko.com. M-A-K-O-W, and uh, my books are advertised on my website, and my books are basically collections that I've organized of my articles, and um, and the and the books are all available on Amazon. Great. Well, it's been absolutely amazing, and uh, it's been great to uh, do this show with you and have you on Age of Truth TV. Finally, Henry Macko, you are a a tough and controversial, but also fascinating man. And I want to thank you very much for being on with us today. Well, thank you. And it, um, my, my, me my method is think for yourself and do your own observation and, and connect the dots yourself. Don't let other people interpret the world for you. Very true. So thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed it. it was, it's been well, wonderful. Well, thanks. And I'll be happy to come on again in a couple of months. Absolutely. Let's do that. I'm looking forward to that. And have a wonderful day in Mexico City. Okay. Thank you very much. And same to you in Copenhagen. Thank you so much to Henry Macko. And thanks to all of you for watching Age of Truth TV. You can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. And please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. You can sign up for our newsletter on our website, ageoftruth.tv, as well. Please also subscribe to our alternative channels on BitChute and Brighton. Your support is greatly appreciated and very needed. And on behalf of the Age of Truth TV team, we thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.